you guys. <laughs> um, go ahead and call tonight's meeting to order. This is the school board meeting for Thursday, July 11th. Um, can I please have the attendance? Yes, Mrs. Durgan, Mrs. Giftos, yes. Mrs. Glidden, here. Mr. Gill, here. Ms. Casalonis, here. Ms. Layton, here. Mrs. Seiler, Ms. Caldwell. <laughs> should have put you at the end <laughs> <laughs> all right as hillary comes in let's go ahead and do the uh, pledge of allegiance i pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and, and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all all right. There are a couple adjustments to tonight's agenda. We're going to be moving appointments up to 10.0 after the student representative report. Okay. I'm going to guess that there will be no public comment on tonight's agenda items. We have another adjustment that, um, for a second executive session on Thank 10.7. You. That's correct. So we will have a second executive session tonight. Going into the superintendent's report? Yes. Um, we have just two things. Um, unfortunately, we had vandalism to our turf field on July 2nd. There was significant uh, damage. Sorry, I'll start over. Um, unfortunately, we had vandalism to our turf field on July 2nd. There was significant damage. The police were uh, involved with uh, the with involved and uh, they're doing an active investigation. Community service has been working to have the uh, field repaired and uh, we're still working with um, community service on the insurance claim and what we're doing. We've been in contact with the police department. They are, um, they do have uh, a truck impounded and they're working with um, finding and uh, with their investigation to where the um, people who are involved. So we'll keep you posted, but right now um, we've had some work done to the field. Community service has done that, and it should be ready um, for our sports season, which is really good because the first day we didn't know if we were, we were going to be able to be ready. The second thing is that our district emergency management team has been planning for the last two years with the police and fire and public safety to complete a, um, an active training. So this summer, the training will be held at the middle school on July 6th from 7 a.m. to noon. This training is not open up to the public, but there will be an increased activity around the middle school and the Wentworth. Friday, Friday the 26th, maybe. Did they say that? No, you said the 26th. Oh, the 26th. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So, uh, Friday, July 26th from 7 a.m. to 12. Uh, the training is not open up to the public, and there will be increased activity around Scarborough Middle School and the work Wentworth parking areas. That's it for we had. We were going to go into the school reports, but school's closed, and everyone's enjoying their summer. And uh, we'll be what, we're working very hard, getting everything ready to welcome everyone back. Excellent. Ali Right now, yes. And so that it's safe? Yes. I'm mm -hmm. I, I had a conversation with um, Todd Souza from Community Service yesterday, and um, this turf was open yesterday. Okay. And the, the second question I had was um, about cameras. It just seems like we've had a few um, events this past year. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if, if there's been any discussion about increasing our surveillance. Um, we had put, uh, Todd Jepson had put in some new cameras uh, last year, and uh, the cameras are at the high school, and there's a new camera from Wentworth who also picked up the activity on the field along with the high school ones that um, looked at the field. So they have a pretty strong um, picture. The problem is it was done at like 4 in the morning, and so you have to have really a special camera to pick up the night vision of that but we were able to get truck people um, but some of the fine details maybe of a license plate is not as easy to get without a night camera but we are it sounds like our campus is at least oh yeah equipped. yes so that's good for people. i mean the wentworth camera picked up 
So from Wentworth School to the turf field is a good distance. To the chair's report, I really don't have anything other than thanking the folks who have been heavily involved with all the different committees that have been meeting um, for keeping things moving along as we prepare for September to come before we know it. All right, heading into committee reports. Um, for policy, um, tonight we're going to have a first reading of policy JJF, which is our student fees. And the committee wanted to talk about the rationale that we had in removing the parking fees for the high school. Um, the fees currently are $25 a semester. It is an on honor payment. There's no bills that go out. It's just a reminder that this money is due. We do not have enforcement or um, parking validations. And this past June, we had 999 students enrolled at the high school. And we collected $3,700, which amounted to 74 vehicles per semester. And anyone who's been in that high school parking lot at drop-off or pickup knows that there's way more than 74 vehicles there. Um, so we talked a lot about you know, the decrease over the last three years in people who've been paying on that honor system, um, what it would cost in order to maintain a program in a different way, would we have placards? Would there be stickers involved? Who would do the monitoring? How would we ensure that payments were made and that people were actually driving? And the amount of money that would be um, associated with that would be higher than the revenues that we would generate at this point. So that is why we were looking for removing um, the fees when we come up, come up at our first reading in a few minutes. I think, can I just add one thing? Absolutely. I think um, not, not only the the monetary aspect of trying to police that um, that fee and making sure everyone is doing what they're supposed to do to pay you know to pay that fee so they can park park in the lot. Um, there's a human resource element as well, and um, we really talked long and hard about we we really don't want our folks at the high school to be policing the parking lot. We want them doing the great work they're doing with the kids. So we didn't know how that would work and. So it was just the money, but also the, the impact on the human resources that we have there. Thank you for running that. Uh, Van. Mm -hmm. I had a couple thoughts on this. Mm, was there any analysis done to why there was such a significant drop off from 20, in just a two year period? We have some assumptions about okay. that. <laughs> um, this has been, I think, in place since 2012. Mm -hmm. Um, while we only had um, data for the last three years that we looked at, um, it's never been something that has been um, followed 100%. And I think that the kids are onto that. And uh, over time, I think every year, um, less and less students pay. I don't know if, if Sue, if you have any feedback on that. Um, well, I think um, several things. I think you're right that kids realized that there were limited resources. We did. Um, we have every year gone out and put on all the cars. We've made a push one morning where we put thank you notes on the windshield if they've got their tag and they've paid it. We put a reminder on the car if it didn't. Um, I, I can tell you from doing that that um, <laughs> tags are passed down with the wrong year on them, but they figure unless you're looking carefully, you see it's a tagged car. So that you might assume that they've paid. Um, it, I think they just work the system because they know that there's not a ton of teeth in it. And going a little bit further, I was always uncomfortable with having a policy that we were endorsing that we weren't enforcing. So that was another piece in the back of my mind as we were going through this as well. This may be something for us to look into, but given that that's a revenue source is there like how where are we going to make that up is that in the other policies no okay and I, so i speaking for myself i had a, a concern because it is a revenue source but um what i i was concerned about all of the things that have been mentioned but it what really um compelled me 
to um, want to remove it is the fact that if we ultimately kept moving, what like ultimately what's the enforcement mechanism? If if you know the reminders are are ignored, we're we're not going to tow anybody, and and so you know it, it doesn't it. It doesn't seem right to have a policy on the books that we're not enforcing, and it also, um, to me, doesn't seem fair that we're really almost penalizing the people that are following the rules because so many kids are driving cars and not paying, and that just didn't feel right. I was just thinking the same thing. I was thinking it could create some ill will for the students that are the rule followers who paid their $25, $50 a year, and now they see someone parking next to them without one, and they're like, well, why did I do that? Why didn't someone, tell, why didn't someone give me the inside scoop? You know, mm -hmm. so um, I agree. I think, I think it's a great idea, but at the end of the day, the, the idea of trying to police this and trying to enforce it would be such a costly matter. It would certainly outweigh any revenue that's gained if we were to actually follow through and do it the way, the way that really would want it to be done if you were going to enforce it. Yeah, and I, and I don't want to minimize that it's a revenue source, because it is. It's a lot of money. Um, but, you know, if we, if we police it, it's going to really take a big chunk of it, if not all of it. Um, but there's also a, a philosophical um, question. Do we really want our kids to have to pay to park at the high school? It's not like we're getting rid of the pay-to-play fee, which is, gosh, I think was like $130,000 that we collected last year. Um, so we're keeping that fee, but we thought that this was a fee that, that made sense to get rid of. Um, where does that $3,700 go? I mean, because I, I know the pay to play goes towards athletics. Is that? I believe it goes to the general fund. In the general fund. fund. In the, the pay general. to play does? No, the yes. parking, parking goes in the general okay. fund. So it's just. Okay. So I think. It's, it, it's not an insignificant revenue source if everyone paid, which in my mind would make it worth looking into. I, t I agree with where we are now, but I think in, a, in addition to that or in parallel to maybe getting rid of it for this year, we should potentially look at like, what do some other towns do to enforce it? And if there's a way that we can do it that's fair and reasonable cost because, I mean, we should be getting upwards of $10,000 right and so that's not I and mean, when we talk about budget and we're trying to cram money that's that's a pretty significant amount of money um to i agree it would, it's it feels bad penalizing kids for driving but we also do have a bus system that they're also paying for or their parents are paying for by the taxes so um i think it's just something to think about in parallel um i just oh sorry that was loud um i just feel like it wasn't super like publicized i mean i've obviously like heard about the $25, but I know a ton of people didn't even know that that was a thing. Um, and I would say that if more people knew about it, I feel like more people would be inclined to like paying for it, um, along with a like monitoring system and making sure that everyone would pay. Okay. Right. Well, we'll talk about this a little bit more. Um, thing, other things that are going on with policy? We will be having a first reading in August of our wellness policy that's being worked right now with the legal team. Currently under review is a social media policy, and that includes four other pieces that it will peripherally touch and that we just need to make sure are in alignment with the new policy that's being written. We also need to look at our child abuse reporting and administering medical marijuana. Um, I know that that one recently came on about a year or so ago but there have been additional changes to the laws that we need to make sure that the policy is in accordance with. And if anyone is so inclined, our next meeting will be Monday, August 5th, and I forgot to put the time on, but it's at 4.30 here in the central office. Well, yeah, I, just all, I also wanted to add that we are doing a first reading on our agenda policy as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Communications. Um, so we have no new business, and we are, <laughs> we don't, <laughs> um, we, we're very grateful for everything that, everything that everyone did um, to get the word out about the budget and the Greater Sebago Education Alliance, which both passed happily, um, and we haven't scheduled our next meeting. That's a great slide. Thank that you. Really 
negotiations? Sure. Um, the, the teacher contract negotiations um, with the Skyward Education Association continues to move forward. And um, as, as everyone knows, I just want to just reiterate that's a confidential process and nothing can be shared at this time. The maintenance contract will be voted on tonight after executive session per our agenda. Right. Long range planning. All right, well, construction is well underway at Eight Corners, and Neil Stripman by has seen that uh, the trees are gone and the work is happening, and I've already seen some of the plumbing roughed in, so it's moving along very quickly, both the portables and the parking lot that's off to, if you're looking at the building, it's off to the left-hand side. Um, we did have a meeting today with the former Wentworth Steering Committee or Building Committee or, or both, um, and I will say that there was a wealth of information that was shared. Um, about the process that goes in, that went into building the Wentworth a school that we have today. Um, and they gave us a lot of invaluable insight that both Sarah and I still have to spend some time sifting through because it literally wrapped up 15 minutes, well, now at this point, 30 minutes ago. Um, but there's a lot of notes to look through and a lot of really good uh, input. And so um, we're very grateful to the time that those individuals spent with us. Um, we're looking to spend more time with them later this summer um, and really keep this process moving forward so that the top of that slide where it says portables, uh, we're not using that word, hopefully, very many times in our presentations. <laughs> Excellent. Nick, I have a question. Please. Um, so what is the timeline for Eight Corners? Because I knew there was some, um, like, P Todd wasn't sure if the portables would be in when they thought they would be in. It depended on, like, natural disasters. And so I was just wondering what, if the estimate is still accurate, and if so... I think at this point, our, our, only, our biggest remaining variable is the arrival of the unit itself. Um, okay. The site work is actually progressing very quickly. Um, in fact, the, the contractors were even more available and, than we thought they would be. We thought it would be competitive and it would be difficult to go with other projects, but it's moving along very quickly. And so I think that the issue really will be um, when does that unit arrive and when can we start to actually start plumbing all of the site work into it. Um, I think originally the optim we were optimistic to think it would be in for the start of the school year. I think we now all recognize that's not going to happen. Um, but hopefully before the snow flies. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And finance. Uh, Hillary, Hillary s stole this image. So <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say that I put it in first. But I moved uh, my slide so that it would be first. <laughs> But yeah, so the first is just a thank you for the budget being passed, uh, which Hillary already said. Um, and so what we have coming up next, so next week we're meeting at, as a finance committee to do, um, well, one, to review Q3 financials. So that, but the, the meat of the meeting will be um, doing a lessons learned on the budget process this year. So we'll talk about what worked, what didn't work, and some ideas that we have for the remainder of this year and then going into next year. Um, we'll then do that same exact process with town council, with their joint finance committee. Um, and then I believe the plan is, and we need to work out logistics, is to have sort of a debrief on that with the full board and the full town council and then get everyone's feedback on how we want to move forward next year. Excellent. Uh, so our next meeting is, uh, is next Wednesday. Can you pass that down to Kristen? Student representative report. So I don't have too much to share out on because as you all know, students are not in school. Um, but I just wanted to share a couple of fun things that some of the primary sc schools did during their last week. Um, so during the last week of school, Blue Point students went to Ferry Beach State Park and kindergartners went to Pine Point Beach both for a fun day of field trips. Um, also, Blue Point had a spirit week during the last week of school. Um, their Monday was color by grade. Tuesday was their favorite t-shirt day. Wednesday was sports day. Thursday was hat day. And Friday was red, white, red, white and blue day. Um, and then I wanted to share some pictures from the Eight Corners field day, which was held uh, during the last week of school. And it looks like a super fun day outside for all the kids. <laughs> And that's all I have. That's awesome. All right. Moving into appointments, 11.1, .1, the high school assistant principal. Yes. OK. Nathan Terrio has been selected to fill the position uh, due to a replacement. 
Nathan has a Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science from Providence College. He earned his Master's degree in Teaching and Learning from the University of Southern Maine, where he's also earned his uh, Master's degree in uh, Ed Leadership. Mr. Terrio has been a Social Studies teacher at Mount Blue High School, Edward Little High School, where he's also been the Social Studies Department cha Chair. Recently, he was a member of the adjunct faculty at the University of Maine at Augusta. The recommendation is to appoint Nathan Terrio as the high school assistant principal. Motion. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? And um, Sue, you want to introduce Mr. Terrio to the board? Good evening. It's a pleasure to be welcoming a new teammate at the high school. I think Nate is going to be a fabulous addition to the building and you know, he's he's going to replace somebody that's just he's going to work miles over the last person holding that permanent job. <laughs> so, um, we're just really thrilled that he's going to be here and working with us. So, welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Congratulations. And I'll make the offer, if you would like to leave, you're absolutely able to, but you're welcome to stay for the entire meeting. <laughs> oh, no. You should go. 11.2, the high school social worker. Yes, uh, Jacqueline DeLabor has been selected to fill this new position. Miss DeAnnable? completed her undergraduate degree in psychology from Central Connecticut State University and her master's degree in social work from the University of New England. She has been a residential and day treatment clinician at Spurwink and has most recently been a day treatment clinician at Connections for Kids. Miss... Just say Jacqueline. Dubell has uh, been placed on step seven of the master scale of the collective bargaining agreement. Um, recommendation is to appoint her as the high school social worker. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? And it passes. Congratulations to her as well. 11.3, the point .5 middle school wellness teacher. Yep. Melissa Johnson has been nominated to fill this position due to her retirement. Mrs. Johnson re earned her bachelor's degree from Middle Tennessee State University in Education. She's been a health PE teacher in several districts in Tennessee, Florida, and Arkansas since 2003. Since 2018, she has been a seventh grade science and health teacher in Springdale, Arkansas. Mrs. Johnson will be placed on step 15 of the bachelor's plus 15 scale of collective bargaining. The recommendation is to appoint Melissa Johnson as the middle school wellness teacher, point five. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. 11.4, a point six, eight corners school art teacher. Paige Andrews has been chosen to fill this position created by a resignation. Ms. Andrews obtained her bachelor's degree in art education from Syracuse University and her master's degree in education from SUNY College at Oswego. Since 2007, she's been an art teacher in East Syracuse Minot uh, Central School in New York. Before that, she was a ceramics teacher as well as a pre-K through six art teacher also in New York. Ms. Andrews will be placed on step 13 of the master's scale per the par uh, collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Paige Andrews to the Eight Corners uh, School Art Teacher, point six. I must also share that it was nice to see an old face. She went to camp with my daughters. <laughs> so moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. 11.5, a point six, Eight Corners Music Teacher. Catherine Newell has been selected to fill the position uh, created by a resignation. Mrs. Newell received her bachelor's degree in music education from the University of Maine in Orono and her master's degree from the New England Conservatory. She's been a music teacher at Trinity Catholic School in Lewiston in regional school district number four. 
Litchfield, Sabattis, and Wales, and has also been in District 51, North Yarmouth, and, Ca and Ca Cumberland. Mrs. Newell will be placed on step six of the master scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Catherine Newell as the Eight Corners uh, music teacher, point six. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Congratulations to her. 11.6, a school nurse. Heidi Negri has been chosen to fill this position created by a retirement. Mrs. Negri earned her Bachelor's of Science degree in exercise physiology from the University of Wisconsin and her RN from St. Joe's School of Nursing in Syracuse, New York. St. Joe's uh, in Syracuse. She's been a practicing, uh, practicing nursing in many different capacities, including cardiac ICU RN, surgical ICU RN, and has been a per diem nurse in the schools in both New York and Scarborough. Ms. Ingnigri is placed on step 13 of the bachelor's plus 15 scale of the collective bargaining. Recommendation is to appoint Heidi as the school nurse. So moved. Second. She has tough shoes to file, too. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I know her predecessor says hi from Dockside. <laughs> All those in favor? Unanimous. 11.7, high school math teacher. David Simato has been nominated to fill this position created by a resignation. Mr. Simato received his Bachelor's of Science degree in Business Administration from Duquesne University in Pittsburgh and his Master's in Teaching and Learning from USM. He's been a high school math teacher at A.R. Gould High School, which is the Long Creek Youth Development Center. For the, four, for the past four years, he's been a math teacher at Wyndham High School. Mr. Samato has been placed on step eight of the master scale per the collective bargaining. Recommendation is to appoint David Samato to the high school math position. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. 11.8, eight corners school classroom teacher. Heather Wiggins has been selected to fill this position created by a reassignment. Mrs. Wiggins earned her bachelor's degree in early childhood education from James Madison University and her master's in reading and literacy from William Wilmington College. Since 2003, she's been both a kindergarten and first grade teacher. Mrs. Wiggins will be placed on step 16 of the master scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Heather Wiggins as the eighth corner school classroom teacher. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Names. 11.9, a high school STEM engineering teacher. Natalie Scovan has been chosen to fill this, uh, to fill this newly created position. Mrs. Scovian obtained her Bachelor of Science in the Biological Sciences from North Dakota State University and her Master's of Art in Teaching Science from Minot State University. She began her teaching as a teaching career as a physical science teacher in Madden High School in North Dakota, and for the last five years, she's been both an earth science teacher and a technology instructional leader at Wyndham High School. Mrs. Scobain has been placed on step 13 of the master scale per the collective bargaining. The uh, recommendation is to appoint Natalie to the high school STEM engineering teacher. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Okay, unanimous. And lastly, 11.10, high school career pathways coordinator. Uh, Christy Zavasnik has been selected to fill this new position. Christy is moving to a full-time role as a career pathways coordinator where she has been responsible for coordinating and growing opportunities for career development services for high school students and for establishing and maintaining business education community par partnerships that support the district goals and objectives for a co college and career pathways program. This work has been piloted for two years. The recommendation is to appoint Christy Zabasnik as the High School Career Pathways Coordinator per the Collective Bargaining Agreement. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Excellent. All right, moving into new business. I will be taking 10.1 and 10.2 as one motion. The workshop meeting minutes of June 20th, 2019 and the business meeting minutes of June 20th, 2019. 
2019. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? And all those in favor? Unanimous. Great. Um, 10.3 and 10.4 will also go together. This is the first reading of policy JJF, the student fees, and first reading of policy JJFE, which is the attachment of said fees, um, both of which are removing the parking for this time frame um, so that we can present this to the students for coming back to school in September. Any further discussion? Is there a motion to accept the reading of the policy as presented? Sorry, this is first reading? Yes. So moved. Second. Okay. All right, all those in favor? And it passed. Um, 10.5 is a first reading of policy BEDB for our agenda. Um, this is, again, a great moment, I think. We have had a really good agenda process that we have been following this year, but this cements this, and it ensures that moving forward we have a policy that outlines how the agenda is created, how it is disseminated, how items are being added into the agenda. Um, I'm really proud of the work that was done on this. Is there a motion to accept as presented? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yeah. Go ahead. You're, you're in it first. I have like a sort of, it might, it might be nitpicky, I'm not sure, you can tell me. Um, so I was just reading through it and um, I was looking in the section about the emergency meeting um, and it says here that um, the notice of the agenda will be given as early as practicable and will be provided to the public and the media at the same time and in the same manner that it is given to board members. Um, my concern there is I'm assuming that would be emailed to us mm -hmm. and and not to the every resident in Scarborough. <laughs> Point well taken. <laughs> <laughs> what section are you under, Hillary? Um, it's under agenda preparation and dissemination. Okay. It's like the third paragraph. Oh, yeah. I just... So you're proposing to strike out in, in the same manner? manner? Yeah. Okay. Only because I feel like you can provide it to the public and the media on the website or, mm -hmm. you know, in, but not necessarily the way we would get it, which would right. probably be email. Yep. That's a good catch. Yeah. That was a great catch. Thank you. Yes. is struck. I, so I guess I'd just like to say that I, I'm, oh sorry Nick. I, it's okay. Uh, I, I just saw that, um, I, I just was um, also really happy with the work that we did on on this um, policy. I think that it um, allow, creates some accountability, it allows for um, public input and in a, in a process for, in which that can occur and it also encourages or requires the um, information to be made public in advance so that uh, the public can participate meaningfully and you know it, I hope people don't recognize that only when there's a problem but just that it will help them um, get a better um, insight into to what's going on day to day. Okay. Sarah? Um, so I, I had two comments. One is ju I, there's just a uh, typo in the third paragraph. says practicable. I think it should say practical. Um, let's just. Oh, oh thank you. Yep. AP English teacher. Can we have a ruling on that? Where are you? Uh, which the third paragraph? You yeah. Just Under it's agenda preparation. Practicable. Yes. Practicable. Yeah. Cool. Um, that has also just been corrected. Thank you. And then the other thing was just, I'm just curious if you guys had discussed and, and what, if so, what the reasoning before for not adding a, a time for when material had to be submitted to the board in advance if we had to vote? 
I think we had talked about this, um, and it had to do with, and correct me if I'm, if I go off the rail on it, it had to do with, if we had said it needed to be seven days in advance, and it was six, we weren't within policy, if we said three, then that really wasn't to the spirit of what we were trying to do. We weren't trying, we didn't want to box the board into a situation of either not moving forward with something that needed to be in case of a situation where we needed to get a vote in quicker, um, but also not to create such rigidity that we couldn't function as ourselves. Also, like sometimes things are in, they're fluid, they're, you know, they're, there's, there are changes sometimes so close to the meeting, and I think that mandating that in a policy could be problematic and also puts a lot of pressure on Kelly um, yeah. as well, so we decided not to do that. Do you think, and I think that makes sense, um, I think just thinking back over some of the things that we've dealt with, though, I wonder if, if we said at, at a minimum 12 hours notice or something like that, especially if it's something we have to, on, I guess only if it's something we have to vote on, so at least we have, it's not two hours before the meeting and we're rushing from work and that just seems unrealistic. Yeah. I like that because um, if, if we don't have that at least 12 hour notice, maybe we should put the vote, put the vote off until the next meeting. Yeah. Um, I think 12 hours is reasonable. Could you, um, is that reasonable for you? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just wondering if you could, to give yourself some flexibility, if you could um, prescribe a time period that would be ideal and then say, it, um, with the exception of special circumstances where a vote is, you know, required right. on, on there, there's a time, some sort of time limit and the vote is, you know, required. Because, I mean, that puts out the expectation, but it wouldn't. Um, leave us not following our own policies if there were such a mm -hmm. s sort of special occasion that needed that. I just wanted to add really quick, and I think Alicia said some of this, but uh, the part of this that really jumped off the page to me when I looked through it was the idea of the non-confidential materials being released to the public when they become available. I just think even though that's been our practice to do that, I believe, I think putting it in this policy and cementing it as one of our guiding principles is really important because while public comment, as we all know, the public may not know, it's not necessary for a school board to have public comment, but I know this board values that, and the board before us valued it. And so I think it's important that we give out materials so that people, when they make public comment, can do it in an informed way. So I'm really glad to see us committing yet another level to informing the public and allowing them to make good and informed comments. So thank you. The, the other check and balance in this that I think um, is significant is in the last part of the policy, the additions and adjustments to the agenda, because it allows for a board member to make a motion at a meeting to add something to the agenda. And so there's checks and balances there. It's not um, the board chair and the superintendent um, alone that has the ability to um, finalize the agenda. Um, there, there's there's a place here where a board member can want to put something on the agenda that obviously is appropriate for consideration and follows the laws and all that uh, in our board policies as well. And it's timely. It's not just extra stuff. It, it's pertinent. Um, but with a, a second, majority second of the board in a vote, then we can actually add that, that to the agenda. And I think that is um, a significant addition to this policy. So I had a question about that. Um, is that intended, so, because there's also a provision for board members to add agenda items up higher. So is this, a, is this referencing specifically at the current board meeting to put it on that night's agenda? Or a future agenda mm -hmm. as well. Okay. So how then is that different than? This could be a situation maybe of it didn't get requested in time to be put on the agenda, especially where we'll, you know, actually starting tomorrow, we'll be working on planning the August meeting. Mm -hmm. um, if something didn't get in early enough, but it was really seen as a necessity to talk about, 
mm -hmm. um, then yes, it could be brought up at that time. And, and Hillary, if you look at this, the last part of the second paragraph in that section, if if the majority of the board voted yes, that that um, if a motion, it, it actually reads, I'll just read it, if a motion is made to add an item to the agenda, the board may, by vote, add it, decline to add it, defer it to a subsequent meeting, or refer it to the superintendent or a board subcommittee for further study. So it doesn't necessarily need to be discussed at that meeting. We okay. decide that as a board, how we want to handle that topic. Okay. I'd like to retract my grammatical error comment. Uh, let's just point it out. <laughs> and we've been doing some research, and it's actually the right practical word. Practical is practical. Practical, practical. 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 There's, there's slightly new, it's nuanced, but it's accurate. Thank you, English teacher. <laughs> I didn't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I did not want to correct Sarah in public. <laughs> I mean, I was. I corrected you publicly, so you can't <laughs> <correct> me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it is back Google. to being practicable. <laughs> is it can, practicable for us to vote on this now? Can I just, I, want to, I also wanted to um, address your comment, Hillary. Yeah, yeah. So um, the earlier provision for request for an agenda item, ultimately that call is up to the chair and the superintendent, and so this will give the full board the opportunity to vote on that. And okay. so if, if a majority of the board feels differently, then... So would you say then that the last, the ad additions and adjustments to the agenda is for two reasons. One, if you didn't have time to do it and you felt like it needed to be done. Mm -hmm. Or two, maybe the chair or superintendent said no, not nice time, and then you can bring it to yes. the meeting and have a vote. Okay, I get that. Yeah. Again, it goes back to the checks and balances. It keeps us accountable. All the way through, and it, and it and it really, yeah, it, it spreads the ability for all board members to include them on an agenda item. Right. Um, great suggestions. We will work through um, adding the minimum or a minimum expectation of when documents will be released, and that will be updated and brought back for the second reading. Is there a motion to wait? Oh, we already had that. All right, is everyone ready to vote? Yeah. Okay. All those in favor of accepting it, knowing that there'll be an additional adjustment in August? Well, it's only a first reading anyway. It is. So. Thanks, guys. Good job. Yeah, that was good. I like this a lot. Thanks. Okay. We have two executive sessions tonight. The first, 10.6, is there a motion to go into executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA 4056D? for the purpose of discussing the maintenance employees contract to return to public session. So moved. Second. Okay. And 10.7, motion to go into executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA 40560 for the purpose of an update on the status of the teacher's contract to return to public session. So moved. Okay. Second. All right, we will be back. Don't we have to vote on that? Oh yeah, we do have to vote on that. Hands up. All those in favor? <laughs> A lot of practice.
We are back. Thank you for your patience. And we would like to go to 10.8, approval of the 2019-2022 maintenance employees contract. So moved. Second. I'd like to open this. It was the way I put it, I guess. I'd like to open it for discussion. Um, yeah, before, before the vote, I just, I just want to say that um, it was a, a, a great um, process meeting with the maintenance folks to get this contract done. Um, it was a great experience. Uh, we are very pleased with the contract that we are able to offer them. I can't um, speak to specifics of that yet until it is ratified by the maintenance folks, but as soon as they sign this contract, we'll get it up on the, the website for folks to look at if they are so inclined. I just want to um, thank Joe and my negotiating team for um, the work that we all did on this. I think it's um, going to be a really good contract for the maintenance folks. The only thing I, I want to say is that it was a pleasure to meet with our maintenance staff. Um, they're a dedicated group, of, a small group, but a dedicated group of people that keep all of our buildings running. And it was an honor and a, and a pleasure to meet with them. Absolutely. I agree with all of that. Mm -hmm. Again, thank you guys for all of the work on getting this accomplished. Okay. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor? All right. Unanimous. Congratulations. All right. 12.0 adjournment for tonight. Assuming that there's no op opposition to that. All those in favor? So moved. Thank you. And again, our meeting next will be on the 15th of August. Thank you.